Um, we're doing, I'm trying to do like a stay home and draw campaign to like help people stay home, uh, first of all, and then also kind of make the most of the situation that we're all in by using that time to be creative and trying to keep our spirits up, uh, cabin fever low, <laughs> um, and just kind of have some kind of social interaction, even though we can't see each other. So, um, I've been doing Instagram live videos this whole week. Um, so this is number four, I think the fourth day we've done it now. Um, and it's been really fun. I've been really enjoying it a lot. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's kind of what's going on here. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back over to Procreate and talk about what, um, what I was talking about a moment ago. So, um, what we've been working on all week is these illustrations I'm doing for making art every day, which is the like challenge, the drawing prompt challenge that I run. And there's a theme every month. And this month's theme is the alphabet plus illustration. So you can, uh, pick a theme if you want, and then do uh, an illustration for each letter of the alphabet. And the like big goal, if you want to, is you can um, work towards printing all of that into a book and you'll have your own ABC book with your artwork in it. And that is just like so cool to have like a book of your artwork. So that's kind of the idea with that. So that's what I've been working on all week. But last night I just finished all my letters. I'm really proud of myself because I started, I think, a week late, and I'm finishing a week early, so I did all of these in like two weeks. <laughs> it's really been taking up a lot of my time, but I'm really passionate about it because I'm really excited for my kids to get this book. So it's there's a lot of personal attachment to this artwork. Um, so we've, we've done, like on the first day, we did this zoo drawing together live. On the second day, we did these waffles. If you are back, you may remember the syrup octopus. <laughs> That's kind of how that game uh, started to look, but I'm, I'm going with it. And then yesterday we did this kind of cool nature drawing. And so I am done now. I don't have any more drawings to do for this book. I've got all 26, but I wanted to keep drawing for you guys. So I decided that I would do um, a self portrait of myself because I think it'd be cool to show how I draw people. And I just last night also did the cover. This is what I'm gonna use for the cover. Um, a few of our favorite things. These are my kids, I drew pictures of them. Um, and so I wanted to do a picture of me kind of in the same style. And then I thought it would be cool to put that in the back of the book with like a note from me to them. So, so yeah, I think that'll be really fun. Um, so it'll be kind of in this style and uh, somebody asked on the other day, and I just want to show it really quick. He doesn't have snow on his shoulders or dandruff, but I had a problem when I merged a layer that had the multiply blend mode turned on with a different layer and took off the multiply blend mode. So I'll have to go back and redraw that at some point. If you're just coming in, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but don't worry about it. So yeah, I'm going to draw a picture of me today in kind of this same style as I drew my kids. So... I'm gonna start a new canvas. Um, for this whole book, I've been using the 5,000 by 5,000 pixel canvas. Get some water. And, um, okay. We're live everywhere. Okay, cool, we're live everywhere. So if you're just tuning in, I'm drawing a self-portrait so you can kind of get an idea of how I approach drawing faces. I'm just gonna do like, kind of like a bust, so not like the whole body, just the face really. So I always start things off with a sketch and I'm starting completely blank. I don't really have a plan except for maybe what's in my head. Um, so that'll be fun. So I'm gonna choose like a middle gray is what I usually use for my sketches. And then the brush I use is, I'm gonna be using gua my gouache paint box brush set. Um, you can find that at bardobrush.com. It's what I've been using for this entire ABC series, so I'm trying to make it all look cohesive by using the same brush set for the whole thing and kind of the similar style. Um, so I always include, I try to include as much as I can, like a brush that you can use for sketching, just so you're not like switching between a bunch of different sets. So that's what this light pencil brush is. So, um, and actually, before we get started, yeah. let's talk about tomorrow, let's talk about the email, let's talk about oh, yeah. what's all going so, on. Before I get started, I wanted to tell you guys, thank you for the reminder, Jeff. 
Um, I wanted to tell you guys about a live workshop that I'm gonna be doing. Like we've been trying to do the these, the slides. Yeah, don't you have one the, like the starting slide for it or? Oh, that's just a picture of me. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll pull up that slide. Hold on. Let me see, Give, bear with me. These are like the slides from my presentation. Um, do, 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 no, no. Oh yeah, so Lisa just did an amazing workshop. Yeah, uh, so uh, for a event called two weeks ago in a time that feels very different than now. I was at a conference. <laughs> um, I was teaching a workshop at the Alt Summit Conference for Creative Female Entrepreneurs, and I taught a class on uh, making art on the iPad. So it kind of talks about um, all the basics of using Procreate and we did a follow along illustration. So I thought it would be cool to do on live video a kind of live virtual version of that workshop. Um, so we're planning on doing that tomorrow. We're aiming for 10 o'clock PST, 1030, 1030 Pacific time. So hopefully you guys can join in. I'm going to be sending an email uh, to my like newsletter subscribers about it with more details. So if you go to bardobrush.com and I can show you that really quick how the where the sign up is. So this is my website bardobrush.com. Down here there's a little like pop up that usually if it's your first time visiting it'll pop up and you can sign up right there or at the bottom right there. There's also a sign up. Um, so yeah, sign up to find out about that. But I should be live on all these same channels that I'm on. So Instagram, I, I think if you really want to make sure, YouTube's probably the most reliable place YouTube to watch is it. YouTube is a great place. Yeah, yeah. YouTube's probably the uh, most reliable will, place to sure watch it. But, everywhere else without any problems. But we're going to try and go live. And um, I'm going to be um, basically taking you through, I'm going to be showing you a lot of the Procreate basics and then taking you through um, a follow along drawing. I'm not going to show you what it is beforehand. It's really fun to just kind of have it develop before your eyes as you're following along with me. So get your iPad, your Apple Pencil. You don't have to have any Procreate experience. You don't have to have any of my brushes either. I'm going to be using built-in Procreate brushes to show you guys this. Um, so it should be really fun. And even if you are more experienced with Procreate, I think you'll learn a lot because the people in the class definitely did. So... And then yeah. uh, make sure we'll have the emails going out um, later this evening. Just yeah, to, I'm going to send out the email later on today. So try and sign up if you can um, sooner than later uh, on the website. And we'll have a link in Facebook and YouTube. Jeff is sharing a link. So awesome. Just make sure you head to the website. Sign up for the email list if you haven't already. And Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I've never done a live online teaching just kind of tutorials and then also just like you guys watching me draw so it should be really fun yeah, and we'll have lots of space to answer questions learn and what's kind of fun we do have a little bit more that starts with a follow along and then ends with a little bit of learning for the animation tools right yeah i'll show you i'll do a little demo of animation but it's like all about the procreate basics follow along and then we'll do like a little animation demo and i do even have an animation tutorial that I might try to do live at some point too. So definitely sign up so you can hear about all that good stuff. Cool. Um, and then somebody on here asked, uh, can I watch this on YouTube later? Yeah, uh, that's probably the best place if you don't get to follow along live. It's permanently available on YouTube, um, on my YouTube channel, which is just called Bardo Brush. So you can find all the live videos I've done on there so far. As you're getting started, we just have a great question. Yes. Uh, what brush set are you going to use? For today or? Yeah, for, for right now. Right yeah, now, uh, I was just Mark getting into that. Asking, what are you going to use? I was just getting into that and let me, sorry. Um, I'm going to be using gouache paint box. It's a set that, it's one of my most popular sets. And it's one of the first ones I released way back when I started selling brushes. Um, but I just released an update for it to harness all the power of Procreate 5, which has really changed it a lot and made it so much better. Um, so that's what I'm working with is that update to that set. And you can find that at bardobrush.com. Um, my brushes are all on sale this week, including my bundles. So you can get 15% off if you wanna try them out. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna start with the light pencil and I mentioned that's a brush I include for sketching. 
I can use it for other things too, but that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, so it's just gonna be like a face and shoulders probably. So I'm just gonna start with like a circle and then like a chin shape. This is kind of how I structure my like faces and I'm not being, I'm not trying to make it look exactly like me. I want it to like, I want to caricature, characterize my features, but it's not gonna be like the exact shape of my chin and stuff like that. This is more of a stylized approach. And then um, my eyes are gonna hit around the midpoint of the head, so I usually mark that line as well. And then I'm just gonna, just for now, add like what the shoulder, shoulders will be. My neck's probably not that skinny. <laughs> Um, there we go. So we have kind of like a head and neck shape. Um, and then, um, okay. And then my eyes, I'm just going to draw circles for now, even though sometimes I draw my eyes as circles, but I think I won't because I'll show you how like, kind of like, I, I'm like trying to develop like what my style of drawing people is and I did this illustration of all my family. <laughs> like this is my husband, my kids, and what I think maybe the baby will look like after it's born. And it's like kind of these like big eyes, circles, <laughs> kind of like a little nose and a smile. Like, so that's like my like stylized people uh, way that I've been doing them, which style changes all the time as you like learn different ways to do stuff. But that's kind of how I've been doing it. But the style that I'm trying to do, which is a little more like there's more shading and more detail is what I did last night, which is I drew these little pictures of my children. So it's a little, it's got a little bit more shading and the eyes aren't quite so round and stuff like that. So that's kind of the style I'm going for. Okay, so let's go back. <sighs> this looks really creepy, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna add a nose. The shape of it will probably change later, but I'm just gonna kind of get like the rough, like a position of where the features are gonna go. And then I'll probably just do like the same kind of simple smile like that. And now that I have this circle, I can kind of, um, that's a little bit harder to see. So, um, so, and oh, like I gotta add some ears. I gotta add some ears, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so there's like um, like the basic where all the features are gonna be. I can probably even add like a hairline. Not the hair yet, probably. I'm making this up as I go, you guys. I literally have no plan. So I'm just trying to tell you what's going through my brain as I'm doing it. Um, and, uh, and, and real quick, just to, just to say it again, um, which brush and which bundle are you in right now? I was just asked a couple times, so I just wanted to... Yeah, um, I'm using gouache paint box, and this is light pencil from that set. This is a set that I created. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. And I believe in all that info is in the description. I'm starting to add it to the descriptions of the videos, which you probably don't see on Instagram, if that was an Instagram question. Um, okay, so now I've got that kind of basic thing. Maybe I will go ahead and do a rough sketch of the hair. I usually start with like a really rough sketch and then like do a more detailed sketch and then start on like doing color and everything like that. So um, the part of my, what is it? This side, Jeff, right? No, that's if I'm looking in the mirror. What side is my, what side is my left? It's on the it's on right. I'm really right. bad with like right it's from left. Right. So, so mirror, like that. Yeah, like there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the mirror image. So that should be... It's on my... If you want to see the mirror of it, it will no, be... No, I want it to look like you see me. Like I see you, it's on your left. <laughs> is it look bad that I don't right know right this? Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. You're talking about this. Yeah, the pair, your part is on the left side of my view. <laughs> okay, this. This is what I think I'm doing. Like, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever thinks about this. We're like, where does my hair part? And um, I've kind of gotten into... Um, a routine of wearing my hair a certain way, which is like like this half of it up with like a little topsy tail thing. It's hard to describe, but um, kind of it's kind of how I drew my daughter's hair in that little picture. And then I, it kind of like, that part is up and then the hair goes like that. And then the hair should kind of extend above the head a little bit, although I don't have a ton of volume on my hair. 
And right now my hair is kind of short. It's like kind of medium right now. So there's that. And then it kind of goes behind my ear on this side. And then it usually goes over my shoulders. I like always pull my hair over my shoulders. So, so yeah, kind of like that. Maybe I'll give myself a little more volume. Why not? And then I don't think this ear is gonna be showing, so I'm not even gonna like, oops. I'm gonna use the opaque round brush for an eraser. It makes a really good eraser because it's opaque and has nice smooth edges. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So let's make it look less creepy. Um, <laughs> let's see, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer now. Above that layer, I'm gonna reduce the opacity by tapping in and then doing the slider down. And just real quick, it's really adorable. A couple of people have asked you to draw. Can you draw Ariana Grande? And can you draw uh, <laughs> Eleven? Uh, we very much know who Eleven is. Uh, I did draw um, Robin from Stranger Things. I don't really do a lot of fan art. I did a bunch, I did some characters for the kids' ABC book, um, but it's not usually my go-to kind of like thing I want to draw. But um, but I did do Robin from Stranger Things because yeah. I love that sailor uniform that show yeah. and that one's on instagram so uh yeah you can find else. that on it's on, on youtube you guys if yeah if you want to see that one it's definitely on instagram right now all right so now i'm using that those circles as guides to like make the eyes a little more like almond shape oh are you trying to sign in okay yeah i got it the eyes are still really big i may make them smaller i don't know i'm still deciding my nose kind of like turns up a lot, so it's, I call it a ski slope nose because then it goes whoop, but, <laughs> and then I'll just do the mouth. And now I'm gonna do like a more, less sketchy sketch, a little more, a bit more detail. Because now I'm defining like where the actual edges of the shapes are going to be, not just like a rough idea of it. And I do have um, a series called People Skills. Um, it's a series of tutorials. It's like 12 different tutorials and counting. I, I'm still working on finishing it, but it teaches you the process of like drawing a face by going through each of the features and practicing doing the eyes and the nose and the mouth and kind of figuring out your style and your way to draw people. So that's a really great series. I highly recommend checking out. You can find it at bardobrush.com slash people. Maybe Jeff can throw a link in the comments for that. Absolutely. And it has like assignments and like I said, all the tutorials and everything like that, so. Okay. While I'm doing that, someone was just asking about our video setup. Well, we happen to have an office very much designed to shoot video mm -hmm. uh, in this exact setup. So we do have like an extra light that we're using, which uh, as someone mentioned earlier, you can probably see I it see in it my in D. In my uh, so you can see one of the lights. Uh, but then we actually have a mostly natural light setup. So we have skylights. Yeah, our office is our garage that was converted before we bought it, but it's kind of still looked like a garage for the past three or four years that we lived here. Um, yeah, four, no, four um, And then we last, towards the end of last year, did this huge remodel um, to make it this really awesome space. I painted a mural on the wall. We've got art hanging up and it's just a really beautiful space. I'll, we're gonna take some pictures of it soon so we can share, but um, it's, yeah, I can't wait to share it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, the, our, our setup is very much, you know, we've got an articulating arm, uh, a couple articulating arms just for holding cameras, lighting, um, and you know, yeah. we want to make sure that you guys have a really high quality way to be able to see all of this. Yeah. And we also, our garage door, we replaced it with like one with frosted windows, so we get a lot of really good natural light, but we do have some also artificial light as well happening here. I'll do that's my shirt. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for the sketch. I'm just gonna move my like eyebrows down a little bit. I look very surprised. There we go. Okay, so that's the sketch. Um, things always don't, you know, don't think your sketch is the end all be all of how things have to be. It can definitely change as you work. Um, I'm turning off the original sketch and then I'm gonna add a layer below my like 
I'll just call it my sketch now. Forget the other one exists. <laughs> um, in fact, I can just delete it. So if you swipe this way, you can hit delete because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm also gonna reduce the opacity of that layer. I hit the end and then just put it down until I can just barely see it. And oh, and the other thing I like to do is I turn that layer to the multiply blend mode, um, which will make sure it always looks dark even though I put colors and stuff underneath it. I'll probably, I know I get lost about blend modes a lot, like multiply, and I wanna do a tutorial on that, but I'll probably use them at some point during this drawing so you'll get to see it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is um, do my basic shapes. So I'll probably start with the face and the neck. So I'm gonna get a skin tone that looks kinda like my skin tone. Kind of like a, I don't know, we'll try that. And then I'm just using the opaque round brush. And this is a brush I use to fill in shapes a lot. I've been using it a lot for this book in particular. Um, it's got nice smooth edges and it's opaque. So make it bigger. So I'm just kind of like using, oops, I got stuff popping up. Um, using my sketch as a guide to kind of create these shapes. And the top of the head doesn't really matter. That's gonna get covered with hair, so it doesn't have to look good. And then I'll just color that in. I could also use color drop, which, you know, I could just drop the color in and fill it in. And then I'll do my ear attached to that. Okay, so there's the face shape. And I'm gonna add the neck as a separate layer because I, I wanna keep this clean chin curve um, when I add the like neck shading. So it'll make more sense once I add shading, but I usually put the head and the neck on a different layer. And I really don't think my neck is this long. <laughs> what do you think, Jeff? <laughs> It's not that long, so maybe maybe we'll change it up a little bit. I'm like, I am like a short squat little lady, so I don't have that long of a neck. See, my sketch is already changing, so. And I don't even really, like, honestly, I don't even need to go this far down because that's going to be my shirt, which I'll do on a different layer. So this is how I did the, the picture of the kids I showed you, and I just kind of was like, whoop. That's all the neck that's gonna show. That's all the neck that I need to draw. Uh, someone was asking, hey, what do you think about the new iPad? Uh, I have, I'm sure it's gonna, it's awesome. It's it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not, not so different that if you just bought the previous iPad, you need to go out and get it. But um, it does look really cool. Yeah, if you're going from basically any other iPad other than the previous iPad okay. Pro, so like a first gen iPad Pro, a mini, the standard iPad, if you're just yeah. needing more layers, needing more credit. I mean, it's they're, they're making the same replaced computers now is the idea. Um, so yeah, it's cool. It's definitely cool. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to do it as like a laptop replacement, which would be interesting. Um, I still definitely use a computer a lot, and I'm not, not trying to switch to iPad exclusively anytime soon. Like, I still, I'm still here for the Mac OS X. <laughs> so, okay, so cool. I've got... That, I'm gonna do the hair shape now. So I am gonna do the hair in two different layers, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna do one above the head like that. I'm gonna choose like a reddish orange because that's what my color my hair is. But I usually do it like way brighter. Like whenever I draw myself, I make my hair like really red. <laughs> Maybe that's what I wish it. That looks, that's what it looks like right after I color it. And then it fades to like a less red, like a less bright red, but, and I'm not, um, like down here, I'm not adding like a ton of detail yet because I'm going to go in and add all that detail later. So I'm not really worried about what that looks like a ton. And then I'm going to do this. Oh, this is a great question. Someone's asking, what pixel count do you use for your high quality pieces? Do you mean like my canvas? So I yeah, think? what's your canvas size? Yeah, I usually use about four or 5,000 pixels on one size, on one side. Um, it's usually more than I need for most things, but I like to uh, be able to like crop it down in case the canvas was too big. Um, you can always go smaller, but you can't like, when you enlarge a drawing, it will make it look more blurry and stuff, so. Um, 
if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so for here, um, I could put a layer behind the ear to like maintain this ear shape, but I'm not gonna do that because, um, yeah, I, I'm not, mm, actually I could do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. For no reason other than I'm just gonna wanna keep this all in one layer. I'm just gonna like draw around that and do it that way. Because it goes in front of my neck and shoulders, so. And probably here too. Just gonna be careful. There we go. And if you notice, I am leaving this open here and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm just gonna fill this in. Okay, so there's my hair. Pretty simple. Um, and now back here, I'm gonna add a layer underneath everything else, behind the neck and everything. And I'm gonna choose like a darker red. So while you're- uh... So that looks like it's behind and it's in shadow. Question? Uh, well, no, it's just a good one about uh, any tips. Um, those who use a lot of layers and nervous about merging them because you run out. Um, someone's doing that right now. That, you and I oops. were literally talking about Whoops. this. We talked about um, that yesterday. We did yesterday, um, and then we actually talked about it, you and I, this morning. Oh, yeah, because um, I merged two layers, and then it did a weird thing to my blend mode. <laughs> but um, I'm just kind of cleaning this up. Um, yeah. I, I will probably get to that in this drawing. I think that usually happens when I'm doing like people. Um, so you just kind of have to like, once you run out of layers, you'd have to decide like what I'm not gonna be editing anymore. It doesn't have to be like on a separate layer and you can combine those. Also, if two things don't touch, like if I am on this hair layer and then I also wanted to draw like a sun or something over here, I don't know, for some reason, um, they're not on the same layer, so they can just be next to each other. And if I ever need to edit this part, I can just like select that and change whatever I need to, like if I'm changing the opacity or, I mean not the opacity, the color or something like that. Like as long as they're not touching on the same layer, you can put things on the same layer. So on the picture of my kids, which let me show you that, how I did that. I don't have my son all on separate layers and my daughter all on separate layers. I have their necks on separate layers, their clothes, um, their heads, like they're not touching, so it's okay. I can edit them independently still. Their pupils and their, their eyes and their pupils and I have all that stuff on separate layers, so. But that stuff isn't touching because these two drawings don't touch, so. I hope that makes sense. Okay, let me go back to me. Okay, cool, so now I need to just add in my features. I'm gonna start with the eyeballs. Um, I'm gonna put that a layer above the face and I'm gonna get white and I'm using that same opaque round brush from my gouache paint box. And for these, I'm gonna be using the eraser tool to make the shape. So I'm just kind of very roughly drawing that in. You can see I'm like going over my lines. Can you guys see the sketch okay? I think you can. And then I'm gonna grab the eraser tool which uses the same opaque round brush. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because then I'll get nice sharp corners here at the corners of the eye. And so using the, like use the eraser when you can because if you're using the same brush as your paintbrush, it's gonna look like you just drew it that way but sometimes it's easier to erase parts away than to get really detailed in there and draw. Like for this one, I could have done it. I could have just done that and then erased the ear shape away, which actually I like this better. I get like a nice sharper corner there. And that's like easier than trying to be like, oh, I gotta get it perfectly in there. And yeah, so get back to white. Okay, so I'm erasing, I'm not on the right layer. Go back to my eye layer. There. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Eyes are hard because um, they're you know, mostly symmetrical. And I can already see like this corner is like way higher than this corner. And these things become even more apparent once you turn your sketch off and you're like, whoa, this person looks really cockeyed. Um, but you can always go back and like 
change it. So I think what I'll do, I think I'll just erase more of this one away so they match a little bit better. And real quick, so we, got, we do definitely have some questions coming in that we want to stop and, uh, and sure. talk about. Um, uh, where did it go? Um, how, how do you put, how do you select something and put that selected thing on an individual separate layer? Yeah, um, that's easy. Um, so like for example, I have the hair in this weird little sun shape that I made just to show you guys a second ago. Um, I can select that. So I'm on that layer. I've grabbed the selection tool. I've selected around it. And then if you um, do three fingers down on the screen, so three fingers swipe down, you'll get this copy paste menu and I can choose cut and paste. And now that is on its own separate layer. So that's a really easy way to isolate something out and put it on its own layer. Right now I'm gonna delete that because I didn't actually need it, so. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got my eyes. I'm gonna do the, um, what is it? The iris of the eye, the colored part. So I'm gonna create a layer above the eyes. I am going to choose um, to make this a clipping mask. And the reason why, I'm gonna do it without the clipping mask first because I'll show you what I'm talking about. My eyes are green, so I choose green. Um, so I do these like big round kind of eyes and you could try and get it to be within, you know, and like erase away, but that's not efficient. So don't do it that way. <laughs> um, instead, if I turn this to a clipping mask now, it's gonna take the shape of this eye and kind of hide whatever is beyond that shape. So watch this, boop. And now that shape is within the eyes perfectly. And it's a lot easier to draw like a circle and then clip parts of it away than it is to like get it perfect the first time. That's why digital art is so awesome. We have these really cool tools like masks and clipping masks, and layers, and like digital art is the bomb. All right, these are huge. Well, now we're talking about <laughs> digital art. We're talking about learning. Um, actually, digital art is their name on YouTube. Was just asking, are you planning to start? comprehensive tutorials on Skillshare anytime in the future. And so um, just yeah, I'm, even just more comprehensive in general, even. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely considering getting on Skillshare and doing some classes there. Um, I've just been sticking, I do very comprehensive tutorials, but right now I do them for free on YouTube. So anybody can watch them. Um, and they're pretty like when I do a tutorial, they're pretty in depth and, um, I think they're really good. Most people say they're really good. Um, and I try to be very clear in all the instruction that I give. So there's definitely a lot already available on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, I do wanna think about doing Skillshare in the future. Yeah. And uh, one thing to think about, like tomorrow, tomorrow is just that. Yeah. And tomorrow is going to be a designed to be a deep follow along tutorial. So. All of you guys out there, this is really going to be designed to. Yeah, that's what tomorrow is. So I have on. I have um like an intro to Procreate tutorial, which just kind of like quickly goes over all the basics. But this is more like you're sitting down in a classroom, digital classroom type setting, and like learning with me. Um, and that's the, the that's like the level of comprehensive maybe that you might be referring to. Okay, so I'm going to add the pupils now. Um, I'm going to create another layer for that. And um, I'm gonna choose, I don't want it to be like completely black because it gets really contrasty. And this is like, to me, getting these pupils right is like the hardest part. If you get them like a little off, like the, it can just look really weird and the eyes look like really crazy, like they kind of do now. And you can try and like, you know, get it just right. But a technique that I have found to be really helpful is to use the liquify tool. And then I'm using the push and you know, there's a bunch of them, but I'm using push and I can just kind of like, let me get a smaller brush. I can like just move the edges around until it looks as circular as I want it to look. And that's like a really easy way to get it a little bit more perfect. I could also, uh, Procreate also has a like a quick shape tool where you draw a circle and then you don't let go and it makes this ooh, shape. I don't know why it's so laggy. Um, hold a finger down and then it's a perfect circle. 
But that to me is like too perfect and I'm trying to make it look hand drawn. So um, that's why I did it this way. Okay, so I've got pupils, irises. The eyes are pretty, like the shapes of the eyes are done. Um, so now at this point, um, I'm just gonna add, I'll add the shirt. I don't know what color, what color shirt should I wear? White with blue stripes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I wear a lot of striped shirts. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna create a layer above the like neck and I'm gonna probably just choose like my favorite color, which is like a teal kind of color. And since I moved the bottom of my neck up, I'm moving where, like I drew the shirt way down here, but now it's gonna be like up there. And I can always change the color of my shirt and I probably will. And uh, someone's just asking, are you gonna uh, make more tutorials that use the standard Procreate brushes? And that's a, an absolutely tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow, the workshop I'm doing tomorrow, actually I will be using only built-in Procreate brushes because I want anybody to be able to follow along regardless of what brushes you have. Um, so that one definitely will be a good one to use some of the built-in Procreate brushes, but um, I generally don't make a lot with the built-in Procreate brushes because I don't really use them. I use, I'm really fond of my brushes and what they can do, and I'm very familiar with what they can do. So um, when I was- Familiar is an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I made them, so. Um, so I don't really use the built-in ones much. And, and talking about what we're talking about, someone actually asked earlier, uh, what gave you the idea to start your YouTube career and to start all of this, you know, yeah. Mario Brush and like, what is this? You know, what is the, why does all of this stuff exist? I didn't know I had a YouTube career, but I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's still, I'm still getting used to like being like a YouTuber. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, oh, that's a long story. Uh, <laughs> um, I started draw, I got my first iPad. Jeff actually bought it for me right after I had my son bear. He's six now. Um, and I was at like Aaron brothers and they had this little paintbrush stylus and I was like, Oh, that's fun. And I bought it and I, I realized you can like draw on the iPad and I didn't, that didn't occur to me. This was like back in 2013 or something like that. Um, but then I, then I started researching. I found the Procreate app and that just like changed my life forever. So um, I started really getting into that in 2016 when I decided to draw something every day for that year. That was like my goal. And um, I, it like really affected me in a lot of really important ways <laughs> and I started making my own brushes and I um, started selling them. I'm doing like this short story here because <laughs> I could really get into it. Um, but um, I wanted to basically, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I lost my train of thought. I don't know, well, I mean, you're just like, you know, that, to be honest, right? A lot of this came out of really tough times for you. Yeah, the, the, I mentally. got pregnant with my daughter the year that I was doing that drawing art every day and it was a hard pregnancy uh very it was very emotional not in a good place mentally um and like having that form of expression where I could draw what I was feeling about um because most days like I had to draw something because that's what I committed to so I just drew like myself being tired or like sometimes being sad and stuff like that so um and then I realized like how important that is. <laughs> I never had that before in my life where I could express myself like that. So that's kind of like the mission behind everything that I do and why making art every day exists is so that people can um, find that within themselves, so to speak. So yeah, I just wanna help people be creative. Um, okay, <laughs> long story short. And if you actually go to my website, bardobrush.com, um, I'll show you where it is really quick, but if you go to about, and then you go to me, it says Lisa Bardo. I, uh, oh, read my full story. I gotta, I gotta, this is my story. So if you want to check it out, um, like that's something I drew when I was pregnant, when I was like, you know, I'm happy I'm pregnant, but it was, if you've been pregnant, you probably have felt something like that before. Um, but I have this talk I gave where I do the like full story about that whole thing. And like I sing a song I wrote on the ukulele and it's 
it's I you check it out. It, it kind of makes me cringe because I like had to be very brave and it's all about courage and it's it's good. It's good. <laughs> check it out. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with this drawing. Um, well, so as, as we're talking about eating, you're, we're getting back to the drawing. Oops, we're gonna be, sorry. Uh, adding a layer. Someone's just asking, hey, can you just make a bunch of blank layers at once and use and move them as you go along? And uh, you know, I just saw that. And, yeah. Like, it's a, it's I mean, to say why you wouldn't. I wouldn't. I probably like wouldn't that. do that because it will just get like really gummed up. Like you'll just have too much stuff. I usually just add them as I need them. There's no. It's easy enough to just add them as you need them and and. Um, work on your drawing that way so yeah. um and you could run out of layers and you might forget that oh that one was blank or maybe it did have something on it but you just couldn't see it so i just add them as you go uh hi daniel uh hi gabriel it's great to see you again uh, <laughs> we have so many so many amazing people who are just coming back um every single day to all of the, all of this so thank you guys we see you we appreciate you and uh, hopefully we're all just learning and yep. drawing and uh, getting a little bit of time off into something fun right now. All right, so I want to keep moving on this. Um, I'm going to add the line art for the like nose and mouth and eyebrows. I usually do the line art at the very end, but when I'm doing faces, um, I want to be able to turn my sketch layer off and just work without the sketch. So I'm just going to add those in now. Um, so for the nose, I usually just select the skin color and then I get like a darker, more saturated version of that color. And for the line art, I've really been enjoying using the Gritty Tilt liner for my gouache paint box. It's got a really nice texture to it. Um, and then I'm gonna put all the like line art on one layer. I'll just do it right above the eyes. And I do my noses very simply. It's just kind of like a thing like that, but I, let me see. You could get you, you could get really uh, complicated with the nose and make it very detailed. And there's you know there's this side. There's like a nostril. Like you could do all that, but like my style is just to keep the nose very simple. The only thing I will probably do is scoot it over from where I had my sketch. That's just how I get, like doing faces. Like my my go to face right now is like eyes. <laughs> oh, that one's usually a circle. Well, imagine that's round and then like a little nose like that. That's like my kind of like cartoony face that I do currently. Um, okay, so I got the nose. I'm going to choose the mouth. So I'm just going to go even more into the red and get kind of like a, like a lip color, not too dark. And I'm just doing a really simple smile too. That's probably not dark enough. I'm not doing lips or anything like that. I'm just doing it really simple like that. I think that's good. And then I'm gonna do eyebrows. I'll make them a little darker just because I know when I start adding detail to this hair, they're gonna look darker. And I can always like go back and redo my eyebrows, but I'm just gonna add them in for now. So there we go. So now we have some features. Okay. so. Um, I'm going to turn off my sketch for now. Um, I don't have a chin, <laughs> but I'm going to use shading to, to differentiate the chin instead of like lines. So, but the first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'll just do that now. Um, I'll start with the face and I want to add some texture to this first. Uh, with this gouache paint box, like the idea behind it is to make it look very painterly. And you can do like a very graphic look like this, but have that like really painterly texture. It's inspired a lot by like mid-century art and um, like, you know, gouache illustration and things like that. So, um, so that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So I have the face, I'm going to turn on alpha lock. I'm gonna select the skin color. So I just selected that. And the brush I'm going to use, excuse me, to do the, the brush, I'm gonna do some brush strokey texture. Um, so it makes it look like you can you could see the brush strokes as you painted them on, is I have these four brush stroke brushes and I'm gonna use light brush strokes for that. So I'm gonna turn the size up. And then this is a really subtle kind of thing, but it adds like just this extra little bit of dimension and I'm just kind of like painting around where, you know, you might have naturally, like if you did this in traditional media, like where you might have moved your brush around, if that makes sense, and kind of following the contours of like the nose, around the mouth, 
and just it's real it's just it's really subtle but it does make it look much more like realistic and less like digital so that's that and then um i'm going to use that same brush actually to add a little bit of shading to this so i'm going to go ahead and choose like a darker more saturated just a little bit and make the brush big and i'm just going to add just a little bit to the edges of my face I'm not really worried about like where my light source would be or anything like that. Um, I just know that like the sides of your face would be more in, in shadow than the front of your face just because your face is round. So that's kind of where these like minor shading is gonna come in and I might add more. The ear is gonna be a little bit darker too. Um, and then a couple things like as I've observed like how to draw people and stuff like underneath the eyebrows would kind of be in shadow so I usually like add a little bit of shadow right above the eyes and I'll probably go back and add more detail and shading and stuff like that later um, I usually like to add like rosy cheeks to most of my people drawing so I'm gonna go get like something a little more pinkish not too different and just kind of like draw like some round shapes and then I'll get like this soft look like that which is a little a little a little too bright I don't know I'll come back to that I can always edit things later but I'm gonna go ahead and do the neck too just so I have a chin again <laughs> so I'm gonna choose that color I'm gonna go to the neck and um, turn on alpha lock so that I can just this is making sure that any strokes that I draw will stay within the shape that I already drew the neck shape so if I draw over here nothing happens and I'm drawing on the same layer. So there we go. We'll do it that way. You're right, Michelle. Alpha Lock um, is a huge lifesaver. Yep. Uh, we, we agree. Yep. And then I'm going to get a little bit darker. And now I'm going to start adding with the chin. Uh, I know I mentioned I wasn't really using like a light source. I, um, deciding like where my light source was coming on. So I just like decide like usually the chin has a shadow that's like bigger on one side. And I'll just pick a side and do it that way. So that's what I'm doing here. So now there's like always a shadow under, right underneath the chin. So that's kind of what I'm adding. And I'm just doing little soft strokes with this same brush stroke brush. And it gives me like a really soft edge. And I, I just selected this color I already have and I'm gonna like just kind of blend it right here a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go get something even darker and do like no, that's too too saturated. We have a couple brush questions too. Um, are you going to make a free brush pack? Uh, we talked a tiny bit about this yesterday. Yeah, uh, I have some plans for some free freebies that I want to make and give away, and have some like tutorial content to go with. So, uh, best thing to do to learn about that is to sign up for the email newsletter, um, and that's where you could probably find out about those kind of things first. And I know like we were talking, maybe it might be like a sketching, like a few, uh, a few brushes for doing yeah, some sketching. Yeah, I've got an idea for like a sketching set and like a sketching tutorial. Um, so you can kind of, I mean, I don't want to give away too much, but. <laughs> true, true. So that's your sneak peek. That's your sneak peek. And everyone else, okay. it's definitely, you know, there's tons that we are working on behind the scenes. So we appreciate, you know, especially everyone who's been following along for a while now. You know, the, to make the content this level takes quite a bit. That's mm -hmm. why we're just trying to jump in to at least be doing this every day. Well, yeah. all of us are stuck inside yep. uh, globally. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So now I, you can see I've added shading under the chin. And now it looks like I have a chin. So that's important. <laughs> um, and I think I'm just going to leave it there for now and move on to the hair. Um, so the way that I do the hair is... Okay, I think I just lost Instagram, so let me try and get yep. back on. Okay, one sec. Okay. Um, so Instagram has a time limit, and it just ended, and now I started it again. So hopefully you guys come on back, and you won't miss too much. Um, but yeah, Instagram, you get like an hour. So I guess we've been doing this an hour already, so <laughs> it won't be too much longer. Um, so I'm creating a new layer. I have like the hair shape layer and then I'm going to create a new layer to put all my texture, the hair texture on. 
Um, so the brush I'm gonna be using for my hair is uh, called Bristle Painter. Again, I'm working in my gouache paint box set. And I love, love, love this brush. It is perfect for doing like hair and fur. And I've also used it for like wood grain and it's really awesome. I love it a lot. Um, I don't know if anybody else is bothered yet by the fact that these are two different sizes, but I'm like noticing it. I'm like, oh, it's weird, but I'll fix it later. It's okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna select the red hair color. And I think I'm gonna start with I'll start with like a darker red. I usually like alternate between darker and light, lighter colors to kind of give me, um, you know, a realistic hair texture. I probably need to go a little bit darker. Okay. And as everyone's just kind of come back from Instagram, sorry you guys. Uh, yeah, welcome back Instagram. There's a time limit and we get an hour and then it cuts it off. So thank you for being here for an hour if you've been here the whole time. Okay, so my hair is pretty straight, so I'm just gonna add some straight, you know, just, I don't know, that just kind of shows off the individual hairs. I'm gonna go past where I have did my shape before. And like, I mean, that already looks pretty cool, like as far as just like a very simple hair texture, but I'm gonna get more detailed with the shading and stuff like that, so. I'm just kind of like blending some strokes down here to make this look a little bit more realistic. And uh, just real quick as you're doing this, which brush um, was the hair? Yeah, the the this beginning? one um, is Bristle Painter from Gouache Paint Box. And I, and I, oh. That's what you've been using this whole time, right? No, I've been using a lot of different brushes, but Gouache Paint Box is what I've been using the whole time. But now for, yeah. for these strokes, I'm doing, um, I'm using the bristle painter. Um, and so now I'm gonna use the same brush to kind of like my hair when it's this way, which is how it is right now. Um, you know, it kind of goes into like hair tie up here. So I need to make sure the hair looks like it's doing that. And hair is definitely a tricky one and I am pretty happy with how um, Far I've come with doing hair because it used to very much elude me and I would just like do like flat color and like a couple squiggly lines you know <laughs> I'm sure that's really like how most people do hair when they're starting out um but I practice a lot and now I can do hair and it looks fairly real fairly realistic but still cartoony enough which is the style that I like um so yeah and uh, I have a tutorial in my people skill series about doing hair and it's very similar to what I'm doing now so I would check that out at uh, bardobrush.com slash people. So I was just uh, asking about the best way to add the updates to the brush sets. Um... If you have bought brush sets from me in the past and I update them, you just go in and download it again. And I usually email everybody that bought it and let them know. Yeah. Um, and if you're having any difficulty when it comes to the brush sets or anything, uh, shoot us a message. Yeah. Uh, we we'll definitely are there on the support side of everything. Uh, you'll get me or, uh, or Lisa will be there to, to see what we can do to help you guys out. So if you have any problems with your accounts or updates or anything, just please let us know we're, we're here. Yep, what he said. <laughs> and you can see I'm like painting over the ear right now, but when I'm done, I'm going to go back and erase that all away. Um, and and real, real quick, Bristle Painter from... Gouache Paint Box. Right. Gouache so. Paint Box. You could put a link to the product maybe in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Jerry was just asking. She was thinking it was wash or dry, I think. No, I this one is sure Gouache that, that Paint Box. Was from gouache. Yeah. And I'm kind of going over the edges of the shape of the hair that I made previously, like that layer. Um, and that makes the hair look like it has more texture um, on the edges. So it'll look more, a little bit more realistic. Like I could, if my hair kind of stuck up that way, which it doesn't, I could do something like that. Um, little kids sometimes have like hair like that, but mine isn't that, it doesn't do that too much. And usually like in the part, like right in the part, it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna like beef up that a bit. I might even get like a darker color. Okay, so now, so that's pretty good. I've got some texture added. Now I'm gonna start adding in some um, like highlights. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose this, the base color, and then I'm gonna go lighter. 
And so the highlights, and you wanna observe hair and look at pictures of hair and see where the highlights would hit. Usually parts that stick up like this, that kind of are, I don't know, convex, I don't know, um, are shiny. So I'm gonna add, usually like right after the part, kind of get some shine. And so I'm just gonna slowly build up. Oops, I gotta make sure to follow the direction of my hair that I did before. And this, this brush is really cool because it doesn't, it's not just one color, like the more you layer on, like the color, you know, see how it's like a bunch of different colors? And that's what I love about this brush, so it's not like a flat color. So it makes it really like easy to make really realistic looking hair and stuff. So you can see like that's starting to look kind of like a highlight. I'll probably get an even lighter color. The more um, contrast you have between like the base color and the highlights, like the more shiny the hair is gonna look. So I'm gonna probably add, make my hair look even more shiny because whatever, I can do that. <laughs> my hair's shiny sometimes when I wash it. <laughs> so now I'm doing this part because this part kind of sticks up a little bit. So I'm adding that. And then I'm also just gonna add just kind of some strokes down here as well. And that's just gonna make it look like there's more definition in the hair. So I was asking, how many layers are you using for the hair right now? I'm working, so for the hair texture, this is more like painting. Like I'm working now with, I'm doing all this hair texture. I'm kind of like doing it in a painterly way where I'm just layering on colors on top of colors on top of colors. Um, but I'm just doing all of that on one layer. So I have this shape that I drew as one layer and then all the like texture and stuff I'm doing as another layer. That's kind of how I do my hair. Um, so it's looking pretty good so far. This is really a lot brighter than my hair color, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna do go even brighter with my highlights. I'm gonna go a little more yellow, a little lighter. I'm still on this right layer, good. There we go. So now it'll start looking a lot more shiny the more I lighten that kind of like highlight color. Mm, I kind of messed that up. So I can make it as like shiny as I want it to be. It's been asked a couple times, just talking about screen protectors. You know, what are you using for your matte screen protector? Yeah, I have a matte glass screen protector and um, I link to it on my website, bardobrush.com slash FAQ, and it just makes it smoother when I draw. Because the, the default, like just the, the screen that comes with it is kind of slippery and sticky. Um, so I highly recommend a matte glass screen protector. Mm -hmm. And uh, one fun thing is we, we are, and a lot of people always ask about paper-like, um, we have definitely not tried it on any of our iPads yet. No, but they sent me some, so I'm gonna try it. I keep saying that every day. Yeah. I just haven't done well, it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully today. After we get through the workshop and, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I can yeah. spend I mean, some time the, the trying thing, out products. <laughs> yeah, the crazy thing is, you guys, is this is uh, a ton of work uh, to get this done, plus we still have two little kiddos, yeah. maybe on the way, child care, and, you know, everything else that's going on as well. Um, so we're definitely exhausted at the end of the day, but this is a lot of fun. Like, this is oh, what, <laughs> what uh, is amazing that we get to be Yeah, here it's been really guys. fun doing these live videos, like having this kind of uh, quote-unquote excuse to just start making these. So I really like it. Okay, so I'm um, I'm doing pretty good. I have... I could probably add more contrast and make the hair look more shiny, but I don't want to like try and make it look too realistic because I'm not doing anything else super realistic. So um, you kind of want everything to look cohesive, <laughs> but I'm getting a little like over here. I might just clean this up a little bit with, in fact, I'm going to go and use the bristle painter. That's the brush I've been using to do all this as an eraser. And I can like kind of clean it up in a way that looks you know, similar to the shapes that I've been doing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna come back and add those back in a little bit differently. Um, let's see. So, 
Maybe make a smaller brush size. There we go. Fill that in a little bit more. There we go. That's good. Does Jeff draw too? <laughs> there you go. You can answer that, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Jeff does draw. Um, he's terrible at it. It's uh, a wonderful thing. It's true. So, anyone can draw. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like anyone can sing. Anyone yeah. can do anything. Yeah. It's just what is your skill level? <laughs> so I'm not amazing at Jeff drawing. is not advanced. <laughs> he's he's uh, a beginner. <laughs> I'm extreme beginner. Um, if you want to go chuckle, you can find Jeff drawing on Insta. Yeah, we, we, we started a thing um, where Jeff, like Jeff got his first iPad and I was giving him drawing lessons every day for like a couple weeks and then. Well, that, that's actually how like all of yeah. this really started. That's, yeah, like, that's kind of how the, this started. The first, the first lessons realistically to this, all so. started as lessons for me as I was traveling and doing a bunch of stuff on the road mm -hmm. that she could like send me little lessons and things to yeah, do. Yeah, and it was like really simple drawing exercises like draw practice drawing lines and squares and shapes and things like that. So I just yeah. added a little texture to the hair in the back. That's all. And it's cool. Those lessons actually became many of the lessons that are now here on YouTube. So, yeah, some of that did. Um, yeah, it did. The top did. One more thing. I'm going to add some. Yeah, I just want to have some loose hairs on the side so it doesn't look so flat. Let's do that. So it's not like that flat edge that it was a minute ago. Maybe same over here. Is your and husband then, an artist? I am an artist. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I am, I am an Just artist. not like an Just illustration not an artist. Illustrator. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are definitely full time artists together here, but uh, that is not my forte. No. Jeff and I have been working to. We we met at work. We used to work at Apple, um, and we've always worked together pretty much, except for like a short time. But we've been wedding photographers for like 11 years and now we've kind of pivoted to this. Um, and we've also done like art installations together. We've done a couple of really big ones. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen those. But yeah, we do a lot of creative things together. It's pretty, pretty cool. We get to do, we do all kinds of stuff <laughs> together. That's literally what we do. Like um, my job right now is how the heck do I make it so we can, you know, stream across four platforms and have the ability to mm -hmm. talk to all of you guys and then yeah. she can be focused on getting to help teach and be here for everyone. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm pretty good with the hair right now. Um, I do need to clean up all of this. So probably the quickest way to do that would be to select this layer with the like hair shape. And then I'm gonna invert it. So this thing will pop up with all the like selection options. And if I invert that, that's gonna select, um, or it's gonna not select this area. So hopefully that makes sense. And I can just make sure I'm on the right layer, on the hair layer, <laughs> and uh, erase that. Boom. Oops, too much. Gotta be careful right here. I could have also selected the face layer to do this, but I know the ear shape is a little bit bigger than the hair. That happened yesterday when I was drawing the picture of my kids. So this is good. There, now we have it clean right there. And I am gonna go back now and add just a few more hairs because I usually have these like hairs hanging down in front of my ears. There we go. Okay, so we've got some hair. Um, so now that everything else is starting to look more realistic, like these eyes are just getting more and more crazy because they're so like flat. Um, so you can see that if you start adding like realistic texture, you gotta do all of it <laughs> or it's gonna look weird. So, um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is like figure out what the heck is going on with these pupils. I think this one's too big. Um, a really easy way to check would be to just select that and no, that's not that easy. Never mind. Thank you, Colleen. Um, and then real quick, we have another person asking a question. Um, yeah, do, do you find that some of the brushes require a lot of pressure in order to show up, like the texture brushes? It depends. Um, um, sorry, I'm trying to let's see why this looks weird. Um, it depends on the brush. Like some you do want to use with a much lighter touch. Some require more of a touch. Uh, more uh, heavy pressure. It just kind of depends on the brush. I usually design brushes to work in um, in a particular way. So like 
they work better when you use more pressure or you can do it in different, oh, they're pretty similar. Um, you can do it, create different effects depending on the amount of texture that you use. Uh, some people just use a much lighter uh, amount of pressure when they draw in general and you can actually uh, um, like account for that by going into the Procreate Preferences which is in the Action menu and by editing the pressure curve. And depending on which way you move this line, um, it will auto like it will automatically make it seem like you have a more heavier or lighter touch. So if all brushes seem to be behaving in a way that doesn't make sense, like it doesn't seem to be working the right way, you might need to adjust that. But yeah. Okay, let's do the eyes. Um, I'm gonna start with the green. I'm gonna turn on alpha lock. I'm gonna add those painterly brush strokes that I was talking about with the light brush strokes brush. Again, I'm using gouache paint box. And I'm just gonna kind of add some strokes in a circular fashion. Very subtle, but it does make a big difference. And then I'll do the same for the pupils. So I turn on alpha lock on that. I'm selecting that same color. And there. And um, I might add a little bit more detail to the eyes because Jeff pointed out to me many years ago that my eyes are kind of more brownish in the middle, right? <laughs> When we first met, he's like, no, your eyes are like kind of brownish in them. And I'm like, what? They're green. And then I was like, oh, kind of they are. <laughs> so. At least I proved a really nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, how my, uh, when we first started dating. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually decided I'm going to use this soft gouache grain brush to do this part, I think. Um, because it's a little more... I've actually, actually got a bunch of, like, literally in two places at once right now about the uh, the pencil. So for those of you guys just coming in, um, it is just a regular Apple Pencil. Um, I've got a link on YouTube and Facebook, uh, Insta. It's not, not as easy to get you guys the links. But, um, this uh, is from a company called dbrand.com, and they sell all kinds of Apple product decals, well, electronics, including these really cool, whoops, number two pencil stickers. Okay. And you know what we'll do um, is we do we have a couple of giveaways still down down? Mm -hmm. We have a couple. We have, we, okay, let's do that. So if you guys are live tomorrow, um, we can do ooh, we can do we the can whole text generator thing. We'll 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 try and figure out. Oh what yeah. We, we should be able to do for as long as you're live. We'll do a free giveaway. Yeah, we can give away a couple. I they uh, sent me a bunch and I gave them away at. Um, Alt Summit when I did this class, um, so yeah, we could probably give do a giveaway during yeah. the during that. Yeah, of these. we'll have a couple ways to sign up. Uh, it'll basically be like um, texting. You'll get a live thing, so we can actually do like a full on random um, generation, yeah. and we'll give away uh, a uh, two yeah. of those yeah. uh, tomorrow during the live stream. So yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, yeah. cool. Look at us—we're even going to do giveaways <laughs> tomorrow. Like, um, cool, you guys. That's exciting. Okay, so um, I'm going to add like the, um, there's like a crease in your eye, like where your, when your eye is open, you can see a crease. So I'm going to add that next. I'm probably going to use the same color as I use for the nose. And I'm on the same layer as like all that line art. And, and tomorrow's workshop, we're just asking, tomorrow's workshop, we're starting at 10.30 a.m. is what time we're, the we the plan. Be live. Uh, and this is a follow along workshop. So And it goes, sure yeah, it goes over like the Procreate Basics. Um, if you've never used Procreate, it's going to be a really great class for that. If you have, you're definitely going to learn some cool tips and tricks and you're going to follow along and make something really cool that you will have drawn by the end of it if you're following along. So have your iPad ready and we can do that together. And you can learn, you can find out about that by, um, signing up for my email newsletter at bardobrush.com. There's a link in the footer to sign up. Uh, and someone was asking about working for Procreates. Uh, that, that they, do, uh, do I work for yeah, Procreate? Yeah, yeah. I do not. <laughs> Lisa does not work for Procreate, no. Uh, I love them. Yes. They're awesome people. I've met them. Yeah. And we do um, work with them every yeah. once in a while. Um, so we definitely know they're an amazing team. We were supposed to go. We, we should be in Australia right now. Yeah, we were planning a trip to Australia for the right now, literally. Um, but then I got pregnant and then there were... 
bushfires and now there's coronavirus. So it's just not in the cards <laughs> for us to go right yeah. now. Our good friends are getting married this weekend. Uh, Maybe. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if they didn't have to cancel their exactly. wedding. I don't know how bad it is in Australia. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, we, we definitely know Procreate. We are not Procreate, uh, but we are okay. here to, to oh, support you guys when it comes to learning about Procreate. I'm going to use liquify to get this exactly where, because I've redrawn it now like 50 times and it's just like, I'm not getting exactly how I want it to be. So I'm just going to use liquify to kind of move it to where I want it to be. Boom. Easy. Um, okay. So now I'm probably going to add some lashes. I think I'm going to create a layer above this because it's going to overlap something that I've already drawn. And so I'm going to use like a, like a dark, dark brown. I try not to use black too much because I think it just looks really harsh, um, like pure, pure black. Um, and I think I'll try the gritty tilt liner, we'll see, but I might switch to something that's less textured for this, I don't know. Um, so I'm just gonna draw like a black line, which would be like eyeliner. I could totally not put like, I'm not doing like a ton of makeup on this drawing, but I do like having eyelashes, <laughs> right? Okay, so now um, I'm gonna move this layer because it's going behind my hair and that normally wouldn't happen in real life. So I'm gonna put it above the hair layer. And I'm just gonna do a few like little lashes like that. Just really simple, maybe a little thinner. Yeah, that's good. And I'll do this side as well. So I'm just drawing like a little bit of eyeliner. If I can't get exactly right, I can use liquify to move it, but I did pretty good that time. I'm gonna fill it in a little bit more. And then a few lashes. How many do I do over there? Four? Yeah. Cool. And then, yeah, I have eyelashes now. Um, and then the other thing I'll probably do is add just a little bit of shading to the eyes. Like everything has a bit of shading except the eyes. So how I'm going to do that is I, there are a couple ways I can do it. If I have a clipping mask that's all, like all in a stack like this, um, I want to use a clipping mask to do it. That's what I'm getting towards. Um, but if I just put a clipping mask above, I'm not explaining this very well. I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm gonna create the pupils as a clipping mask and now I'm gonna create another layer above that and make that a clipping mask as well. I'm gonna use the multiply blend mode to add these shadows and I want them to affect all the layers that are involved with this eye. Um, just maybe watch <laughs> if that doesn't make sense. So uh, because all these layers are clipped on and they're all on top of each other, they're all being clipped to this eye layer. So, that's the shape that they're using to, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and lots of people are asking about signing up like what time tomorrow. So like, again, that's 10 30 AM Pacific standard time. Um, but what we really want you guys to do is well sign up for the email newsletter. So head to Bardo brush, uh, .com, sign up for the newsletter later today. We will send out, a I'll send out all the details for tomorrow, but we're, we're aiming for 10 30 PST. Yeah. Okay, so now the brush, I haven't used this one yet. It's called Thick Sticky. Uh, and it is a very like textured painterly brush with a lot of like smear, like you imagine when you paint into wet paint, it kind of smears. And that's kind of the behavior that this brush does. So I really wanna have like a soft edge and I might blend it a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit of gray to the corners of the eyes because eyes are round. So they have shadows to them. I might add a little bit at the top as well. I might go a little darker. So because I have multiply blend mode turned on and it's being clipped to the shape of this, it's only, I'm only painting within the shape of the eye and it's darkening everything that's below it in the layers. So the pupil and the iris and the white of the eye all gets that blend mode applied to it where it's darkening whatever I'm painting in. Hopefully that makes sense. And I had someone ask about what is your favorite eraser brush to use? And you know, I mean, I'm not sure. Um, I wouldn't say I have a favorite eraser. It's just whatever 
works the best for whatever I'm painting. Like I usually try and match the eraser to whatever brush I'm using so that when I erase it, it looks seamless, it looks the same. And I'll talk about that a little bit in my workshop tomorrow, actually. Oops, I'm gonna try and get it. And don't forget you guys, tomorrow you just need an iPad and an Apple Pencil, everything built into Procreate is what we're gonna be using tomorrow as well. So you don't need yeah. anything other than And Procreate. if you just wanna watch, like you can learn stuff too, so. Tons of tips and tricks, doesn't matter what skill level you are. Um, I've gone through the workshop and I was really surprised at how good my art was. I'll yeah. Finally, I'll Jeff. finally post it to Instagram later today, maybe. Jeff, uh, uh, we uh, talked uh, about Jeff's skill or lack thereof of drawing. Yeah. And, he, I and did really well. I first did the workshop on him to test it all out and, and uh, his looked good. Like, I really was very impressed. So, um, okay. So I just added like a tiny highlight to show, you know, that like part of your eye there. I'm not trying to get super detailed, but... Some little things like this do make a difference, like in giving it just a little bit of definition so that, you know, that part of your eye that is the top of the bottom eyelid. <laughs> um, that's why I added that there. I do need to add some ear detail. So I'm gonna grab this color again. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm losing my voice. And um, draw in some ears. Do I still have the right brush? Yes. Um, and this is the way I do ears. Um, I know I talked about my people skills series and um, we do, we, there's one on ears where you go through and draw ears in like a bunch of different ways to figure out your preferred way to draw an ear. First you study like what ears actually look like and identify all the parts of the ear. Um, and then you can figure out like what your way of drawing ears looks like. And this is kind of what I've settled on for like cartoon ears is this like, this here, and then it has that, um, I don't know, I forget what it's called, but it's in the video. <laughs> that part of your ear that sticks out of your head, uh, and then it kind of like connects up at the top. So that's my like simplified way I do ears. Um, and now that I'm looking at this ear, it looks so tiny, right? Like, <laughs> that's like a super small ear. Um, the concha is the bowl-shaped part of the ear that pushes your ear away from your head. The concha. The concha. Hmm. It's not like a tragus, isn't that the tragus? Maybe that might be the, the little part. The little nub that part. sticks out, like this part. The right? nub? This flap. Uh, oh, the flap? No, one. here, this. The other one? This. Oh, the little thing where you, I think you know, don't you have it pierced? No, I have my rook pierced, which is like this part right here. Okay, so you're talking about the inside part. Anyways. <laughs> You guys like our playful band. Okay, so my ear is small. I think what I will do to make it bigger, because the way that I have them all separate on layers is gonna be difficult. I'm gonna try and use liquify. I don't need. So I'm gonna select all the layers that might have something that relates to the ear, like the hair, this, and the face. And go to liquify. Oh, I can't use liquify if alpha lock is turned on, so I turn that off. That's not the right thing I meant to do. Liquify. And I'm just gonna kind of probably just, I don't know, this might not work, but it's all about trying things just to make it look a little bigger and not like a tiny ear. See, now my hair is getting a little wavy when I meant for it to be straight, but I think it looks a little better. It doesn't make it look like I have a tiny ear. Although I will say my ears don't have this, like an earlobe. I've connected earlobes, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll just paint that over. <laughs> tragus. That is it's a tragus. tragus. I knew tragus. it. Yeah. And then the anti-tragus is like the opposite side where it's like pointing to, is the other, like the oh, on the other side. So you have, we all have traguses and anti-tragus. Oh, I didn't know about the anti-tragus. But yeah, the video does go into some anatomy, but very basic, like just enough to help you observe and get an understanding. Um, I don't know why I'm doing it that way. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> like I said, I'm not t trying to make it look too realistic. So um, so yeah, this is looking pretty good. Um, I think I might just add a little, I'm gonna go to the face layer and just add a little shadow in the middle of the ear. So, the detail brush you were using, was that the same one for sketching someone was asking? Um, the detail brush. Uh, I don't know which one you mean, but no. <laughs> Because I used, I only use this light pencil for shading, and I've been using different brushes for everything else. So, um, what am I trying to get? Light brush strokes now, because that's what I've been using for shading this time, which is that's too dark. 
just to kind of darken in there just a little bit. And now like my ear, like um, detail looks too light. Someone was just saying, this is like watching a very modern Bob Ross. Oh. <laughs> Instead of happy trees, we've got happy hair. Happy hair. Happy hair, brush strokes, you guys. There you go. Um, I just use hue, saturation, brightness to like select that area and then just make it a little darker, a little more saturated so you can see those lines. And what uh, Julia actually yeah. meant, uh, she meant the face and ear line work. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one is gritty tilt liner. It's this one here, Gritty Tilt Liner, but it's not the one that I was using for light pencil. Although this one would make a pretty fun liner brush as well because it has a lot of like great texture. So you don't just have to use it for sketching. It, it would be great for doing line art, but I'm, I'm very fond of this Gritty Tilt one. So, um, okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this for the most part. The only thing I haven't really done yet is the shirt, so I'm just gonna really quickly add some texture to it. I'm not, I could do stripes. Should I do stripes, guys? I always wear stripes. I'm wearing stripes right now. She is <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, maybe I'll do stripes. So I'm gonna do that before I add the texture, just so I can show you um, how I do that. So um, I'm selecting where that blue layer is, and I'm gonna create a layer right above it. And I'm gonna set that layer to be a clipping mask. So now I'm just gonna draw my stripes right over it. I'm gonna use, I'll use the opaque round brush because I want them to be nice solid stripes. And I'm just gonna do this. Let me see. Now, where do I want them to start here? And I can make them as thick or as thin as I can. Uh, Procreate also has the quick line feature, so if you aren't so good at straight lines, you can hold, like, draw a line and then don't let go, and it'll make a straight line. But I think I'm doing fairly well with these stripes. I'm pretty pleased with myself. No, now I'm gonna mess up. Let's see, I jinxed myself. Oh well, that's okay. I like my stripes a little wonky. Um, and then, and then what I'm gonna do because the stripes on your sleeve are at a different angle normally, so I'm gonna erase where the sleeves would be. And then I'm gonna draw those separately. So I'm gonna create another new layer. And let's see, they probably go this way. I'm not worried about overlapping that because I can erase that. Okay, and then this side, way too thick. And as you're doing this, uh, someone was actually asking, how many layers do you have right now? Oh, good question. Uh, let me check. I just added this layer, which tells me it's layer 16, but sometimes it gets the numbers different, like not correct. So I think I can find out layers. So maximum, oh, it was right, yeah. Max, so I'm in, uh, where did I go? I went to actions menu, canvas, canvas information, and this is fun, so you can check out some like cool data for your artwork. Um, there's a lot of different info here, but I'm under layers. So the max layers I can do on this size canvas is 17. I've used 16 of those layers. There's one available if you can't do the math. <laughs> um, and like how long I've been working on it, I've been drawing this piece for an hour and 14 minutes. So you can go back to some of your art and say, um, oh, I worked on that piece for this amount of time and it's tracked time. So it's like if you took a break in the middle, it's not gonna count that. Just like time when you were actually like putting your pencil to your screen. So that's pretty interesting. Someone was just mentioning about running out of layers, uh, and that's definitely, that, that can happen to all of us. Yeah, I'm, I'm close, you guys. Like, I only have one more that I can use, so maybe I'll show you what I would do if I would run out. I'm just kind of erasing where this would touch here a little and, bit. And that all has to, I mean, there's so many different things that affect the amount of layers. Uh, you know, it's canvas size, it is your actual iPad itself. Uh, it's two things. It's canvas size and the hardware of your iPad. Yeah. Faster iPad, more layers. Smaller canvas size, more layers. Yeah. So that's one of the advantages of having like a faster, more powerful iPad is that you get more layers. Um, okay, so I've drawn my stripes. I'm gonna add some, um, texture to this blue so it's not quite so flat. I'm gonna choose a little bit darker blue, teal, aqua. I'm gonna get the deep edge brush strokes because that shows a lot more of that like brush strokey texture and just kind of lightly 
paint that on back and forth. Uh, yeah, a couple people were saying, yeah, yes, please. I'd love to see the running out of layers yeah, process. Yeah, um, that's going to happen in just a second, so. I don't know if you guys hear my dog barking, but he is. His name is Charlie. Okay, so I forgot to turn on alpha lock on this layer, so now I... <laughs> now Jeff is talking to the neighbors. I don't know if you can hear him. I'm turning on alpha lock, so now I can paint in and off the edge, and it's no big deal. All right. My dog loves barking at stuff. His name is Charlie. I drew a picture of him for this ABC book I'm making. Cool, so I've got some texture there, and now I wanna add some shadows like underneath, um, like where the hair is, and like maybe the edges of the shoulders. So to do that, I'm going to do the similar to what I did for the eyes. I'm gonna make sure this layer is clipped, and then I'm gonna create another layer. Now I'm on my last layer, clipping mask, and I'm gonna set that layer to the multiply blend mode, so anything I draw, on this layer, we'll darken all the layers that are underneath it because I want it to darken the stripes and the blue. Um, so now I'm gonna get like a light gray. You can also use other colors to add shadows, but I'm just gonna use a gray. And I'm using the soft gouache grain brush and my eye, oh, Procreate just decided to crap out. That's all right. <laughs> This this is scary when it craps out and then like you're like oh my god all my work but it usually once you okay once you open it up it's fine <laughs> um, okay so let's try that again um, and now I can see something's happened where like it's not darkening so I just need to turn multiply blend mode that was weird I don't know procreate what's going on with that all right and I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shading like under where the hair might be and the edges. Not a lot, just the shoulders, a little bit under here, maybe under the hair. Alphonse was just asking uh, real quick, is Procreate worth the $10? Oh my gosh, it's worth, it's worth, <laughs> I, I, I would probably pay, I've paid a hundred, hundreds of dollars for it for this point, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, and they keep updating it and releasing new stuff and the updates are free. It's not like Adobe where you pay like $50 a month forever or something like that, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit darker gray and maybe just do the very edges of the shoulders. I'm just adding some really subtle shading there. Um, cool, I think that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so I was gonna tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with this. I think I'm pretty much done at this point, but if I needed to add another layer somehow, I don't know what example I could give, but um, there are certain things that I could probably combine. So right here, I think, oh yeah, that's the eyelashes. So I don't wanna get rid of that. Um, I would probably start by combining these two layers, the ones with the hair in the back. Uh, I don't really need those to be on separate layers. Uh, at this point, I could probably combine these two layers. I put them on separate layers so that I could easily erase parts of it without affecting the other stripes. But I'm as long as I'm happy with that, I can combine those together and that would be fine. Um, and then like maybe even the hair layers I could combine those together and I could also erase my sketch like I don't really have to have that anymore so you're just kind of like deciding like will I need to edit this independently of the thing it's on top of if the answer is no then you can merge those layers but do it you know don't just go crazy and merge a bunch of layers because you might be like whoops like I didn't mean to do that like I did <laughs> So I added that the darkening here. This is the, the similar style I drew of my kids. And when I combined, I combined the like shadow and the stripes and then it like turned off the blend mode somehow. So now that's all in one layer. I can't really do anything about it. I'm probably just gonna have to redraw the stripes and the shading um, to fix that. So that's kind of a bummer, but it's not too bad. Like you guys saw the stripes weren't really that hard to draw, so. Yeah, I think I merged it because I ran out of layers to do something, so. Um, so yeah, so there is my finished piece. I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks like me. The hair could probably be a little bit darker, but if I'm 
going to be critical. I guess I could, um, I could edit that like, in fact, pretty easily. Um, I'll probably, I could start with the layer with the hair on it, like the shape of the hair. I use hue saturation brightness, which is in the adjustments menu a lot to like edit colors slightly. I can make it, you know, darker. So this is like the very bottom most layer and make it a little bit darker and then go to this layer with the like hair texture and you know, oh, that's the saturation. Make it a little bit darker. I don't know, maybe it's a little too saturated. I don't know, I, you could play around with it, but I don't know, I probably won't. We'll see. Someone's just but, saying, you know, hey, I, I have that Adobe subscription, um, which by the way, if you have the Adobe subscription, look online, there's a way to get, to basically have your subscription for free right now. So oh yeah. Uh, so one, take a look at that, because uh, that's a possibility. Yeah, the Infinity apps, which I know some people use for like making vectors and things like that. I think uh, they're doing some free subscriptions right now too. Yeah, absolutely. And then we've got everything is discounted right now. Just yeah, you we, tools. I, you know, I, put, I decided to do a sale, you know, because with everything going on, like some people, maybe they wouldn't have bought it before because they can afford it or whatever. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit if you wanted to try out the brushes. But uh, everything in the shop is 15% off right now, including the bundles, which are already discounted pretty well from like buying things separately but I don't usually put them on sale that much because of that but they are right now so uh it's a good time to act on that if you want to get some of those things yeah and, and then um you know as to more deeply answer your question should I still pick procreate even though I have all these adobe products oh yeah um personally I have a very a, I'm very opinionated about it like fresco is the alternative like the adobe alternative but it's just like it's just not there yet as far as procreate goes you get a free well if you have creative cloud you get it for free so you can try it out but there are a lot of features that it's still lacking when i tried it out i was like excited when i heard about it coming out and then i tried it and i just it wasn't as good <laughs> procreate is 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 got so much more features and they're always working on updating it and the price point is amazing. I really believe a lot in their team. Like the people um, that work there are so passionate and like kind and excited and like they just really care a lot. And Adobe, I'm sure there's a lot of people that really work there and care about it, but it's like a big company, you know? So I like to support the little guys <laughs> if I can. What's, um, what's, your, what's your number, what's your biggest love and biggest gripe about Procreate right now? Uh Oh, biggest love, God. I hate doing favorite questions. I know, I know. I'm not like a definitive answer kind of person. She's, not, she's so indecisive, you no, guys. No, yeah. Is the like, of if, my if somebody's like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite restaurant or food? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I have a lot of favorites. I can't pick. Like, what's your favorite color? Like, don't, like, maybe this color. Like, this color range aqua, teal. <laughs> but I love them mixed with all the other colors, too. So, um,. Uh, do I have any gripes about Procreate right now? Beyond the, um, like, one month. Yeah, but beyond the, like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's that probably type the big of thing. one right now, uh, is, is the only gripe. Yeah, um, I don't have anything where I'm like, oh, I wish it did that, you know? Like, they're really working on yeah. things like that, and, like, they really listen to their community. They have a discussion board where you can post, like, I should probably go and post about that multiply blend mode thing when you merge layers. Um, and they actually listen and they read these boards and like that's how they decide what features to implement and things like that in their future updates. And then, I mean, for the, our Procreate community on Facebook is live here as well. But so even for YouTube, you guys like looking for deeper connection, looking for answers, help. We have an amazing yeah. Facebook group. Yeah, if you want to just get, like, if you have Procreate questions, like, I try to answer as many as I can, but um, if you go and join the Procreate community, it's called Procreate Community Learn, Draw, Share um, on Facebook, uh, it's 33,000 people and growing, and it's, and, like, a really supportive group of people as well, and that will just, like, help you answer questions, and, like, our whole philosophy in that group is to be as supportive as possible so um that's how i try to run it and then i also have the bardo brush facebook group which is making art every day bardo brush 
And um, that one's more focused for like the making art every day challenge and all things Bardo brush, like my brushes and tutorials and things like that. Let's just show one more thing real quick. Uh, yeah. How can you undo the option that your hand accidentally moves the things around when you're drawing? Um, this doesn't happen to me and I don't know if it's cause I already have it set, but it should be in the preferences. So actions menu, the wrench preferences, um, <laughs> gesture controls and maybe it's under general. Ah, yes. Uh, disable touch actions, meaning fingers, Finger touches will only perform gestures. So maybe that's why mine doesn't do, I don't have that problem. I don't know if that's what you mean. Like if, if you're like, I don't think I can draw with my finger at all because I have that turned off. But my kid's iPad, they have finger drawing because that's how they draw stuff. So hope if that's what you mean, maybe that's that's what that, that setting can do. Any more questions? Um, no, we, well, Eva was just asking, do you have a Patreon? Uh, we, we do um, have a Patreon. I don't have a, pa a Patreon account. Um, the best, if you would love to support me, which I super duper duper appreciate, um, you know, check out the brushes for sure. See if there's anything that, you know, tickles your fancy and you might want to purchase. Um, I do also have <laughs> this page that I made recently. What is it? Buy me a donut. <laughs> I think I actually Literally got them. Buy me a donut. <laughs> I saw that the URL was available for buymeadonut.com and I was like, I'm going to get that 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 uh, URL. And it just goes to this page. Um, so if you want to, it's kind of like that buy me a coffee thing um, that you can just go and support an artist and like give them a few bucks, you know, whatever you can. But like, but you know, that's totally up to you. If you want to, you can do that. But that's what that is. Um, yeah, the real and I is super, you guys, watching, you guys watching this, like being a part of this community is really, yeah. what this is about, uh, it's about you guys learning, you know, all of us learning together. Um, yeah, know, I yeah. get, I get so much satisfaction just from the, like people participating in the things I create and using the things I create. Um, I just like my life mission is to help people be creative and like, I get so much satisfaction out of that, but, um, you know. Yeah, so um, thank you. That's, <laughs> guess what I mean by that, for being a part of this. Absolutely. Uh, any more questions? Um, how do you deal, you, you talked about, well, we, there's two questions, favorite artists, and how do you deal with artist block? And I think artist block is a great thing to just uh, mention, you know, just because we're all. I need to like keep a list of my favorite artists. Mary Blair and Frida Kahlo are probably my top two, like, you know, like as far as like historical artists. Um, um, Mary Blair is like, well, actually both, both of those women are huge. Yeah, they're, they're like the biggest probably inspirations throughout my life. Like I got to go, I, I lived in Mexico for six weeks. I have family there. I'm actually half Mexican. Um, when I was a teenager, I lived there with my family for like six weeks and we went to the Frida Kahlo house and I didn't even know that I never knew about her until that point. And so we went and I was just like introduced to her artwork and I just, oh, I just love it so much. The way that she expresses and the, oh, yeah, I could go on. Um, and then Mary Blair is, all, is also one of my favorite artists and I just love her style and colors and like her story. And we have a couple Mary Blair kids books that I read to the kids. They know who she is. Their room was kind of designed uh, based on her artwork. I like painted a dresser to look like her artwork and stuff. So those are two of my favorite artists, I think. Yeah. And then the other one was about artist block. And that's kind of why making art every day exists is to help you um, overcome your creative fears, which not knowing what to do or feeling down about what to like that. Those are creative fears. Um, put up. Well, what? No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. This is a making art everyday website that has all the daily prompts and information about it. But I send out weekly tutorials. I have like a little motivational um, part of that where I try to like motivate you guys. Um, but like just participating in something like this where you don't have to think about what to draw. Where you're just like, I want to make art every day. This is what you know, draw this thing, and then you draw it, and then. Um, the whole point of this is to get you to a point when, where you, if you have something you want to make that's not this, like that you want to express, you have the 